Mm. So, yeah, not not been a great mental health day. It's okay. You're alive. All right. Occasionally. Let's go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hello, Guardians. Welcome back to Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, is the dungeon diving, the nightmare containing, the birthday boy himself, Josh Finney. Oh, God. The birthday boy. Yeah. Guys, I'm turning 30. Avoid it at all. If, if at all possible, avoid turning 30. <laughs> How do you just avoid turning 30? I don't know, but uh, I, I had people. Go, I, a lot of my friends are older than me, and uh, one of John and I's friends, uh, Phil, was like, "Ah, oh, dude, when you hit when you hit thirty, that's it. You're gonna wake up with back pain all the time." I'm like, dude, I woke up with back pain when I turned twenty-one. Like, that's been there for nine years. That's not going away. Like, that's also the year my feet broke down and everything else. Like, so I am like really scared of what thirty is bringing. Well, Josh, I'm thirty-five, I'm and I permanently. I permanently have to wear a knee sleeve because my knee hurts, and it's the only way it doesn't hurt. So yeah, I wear ankle braces pretty regularly. <laughs> uh, two surgeries later, still wearing ankle braces, mm. but you know what? It's it's all good. My uh, my sweet sweet mother, who you know, I've, I've talked about mom a few times. Grandma, hi mom. She uh, yeah, gr- yeah, love grandma. Uh, not she's not a space grandma. She's just grandma. Uh, got me a waffle maker for my birthday Ooh, a waffle um, maker she uh she's bought me like three waffle makers in the last like five or six years so i just you know we're kind of at the point of her life she's she just turned 86 a couple of days ago we uh we're at the point where we just say you know thank you grandma and uh so i have a millennium falcon waffle maker and this thing is actually like pretty bitchin so i was like all right uh, Chelsea's asleep right now, but I was like, we we got we got to have a meeting about the waffle makers. This is like our fourth one. We got to decide which waffle makers are going. <laughs> so I think it's gonna be we're gonna keep a traditional one, you know, just one that makes straight up waffles, and then right. keep the Millennium Falcon. So yeah. It's time for Darth Vader to be retired. She got us Darth Vader a few Christmases ago. It's time for Darth Vader to be retired. Mm. So, but no, it was like it was just like all like all sorts of kitchen stuff, which you know, cool. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm not the world's, like, most enthusiastic cook. So I guess this is, like, her message to if you can't cook anything else, at least go cook some waffles. Yeah. Speaking of of waffles, have you watched Kenobi? Are you caught up on Kenobi? Oh, my sweet God. Yes, I'm caught up. Um, Dude, that third episode was so good. It was so good. Uh, it, It was great. It was great. I, I've seen complaints about, oh, well, you know, the set design is on that. The, the writing is really, it's, it's just really, uh, really low quality. Um, it's, uh, it's so derivative. Shut the fuck up. Kenobi is fucking great, man. Dude, it's Listen, awesome. Listen, I did not want an Obi-Wan Kenobi show. I have made it, I have been saying it for years. I did not want it. I saw the first trailer and still didn't want it. It took up until those two episodes came out for me to go, okay, I was probably wrong about this. After episode three, I'm all in, man. Dude. Something about Star Wars and episode three. Yeah, dude. So I was, so I would say the first half of the first episode is not great, but everything after it it's is fine. awesome. Uh, it's the, fine. It, it, it doesn't the, to set up in a lot of exposition. I no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the way it's shot in particular. The the oh, chase yeah. the chase scene in particular, where character spoiler oh, you, here. You didn't like the bassist from the Red Hot Chili Peppers chasing a child? No, it was not. It did not look great. I did. Hmm. I did. Oh, well, the I tree branch. Hard, I can't but... run through the small tree branch. That's part of what Star Wars is supposed to be campy. I don't like I saw a lot of complaints about that. I'm like, Star Wars is such a fucking campy movie, though. Like, can, have we never gotten over the fact that stormtroopers are basically wearing PVC armor? <laughs> like, it's literally made out of plumbing pipes. Like, come on, guys. <sighs> this is gr- like one bullet kills you. Like, come on, man. It's it's fantastic. I love it. I, um, I Zach do. Braff cameoing is like the like a secretly white supremacist alien right right are we lost on this planet or are we lost in like the backwoods of alabama it's fair because like this as soon as you see that imperial flag i'm sorry i busted out laughing because 
it was like, yeah, this is like what I drove from Pensacola to Gulf Shores. Mm -hmm. And ha my friend Chris took me on all these back roads and I saw, you know, a lot of symbols and a lot of flags. You can't fly anywhere else in this country. It sounds like my and, drive uh, home from work every day. <laughs> oh, man. <Yeah. laughs> Let's play a new game. Is it uh, a mining planet on Star Wars, the backwoods of Alabama, or a suburban neighborhood where Corey lives? <laughs> find out uh, but yeah no it's episode. it's great it's great kenobi's fantastic ian mcgregor is great oh my gosh uh, she's star amazing. wars finally said fuck you racist oh, man yeah it's been a great it's been a great week yeah a great week for non-racist star wars fans right oh so good oh, that fallen order 2 teaser came out yeah so okay so before we get into destiny i have a question for you and you're the only person that i know that is smart enough that can answer this question in that trailer who is in the tube i have no fucking clue i have no idea damn it. i'm so happy that i don't know either damn it josh you were the uh, one person i was counting Apollo on asked me uh ray asked me he goes is that mara jade and i was like that is not mara jade mara jade is a redhead that We're guy safe. that's not mara jade that guy clearly has a beard though yeah i've watched that trailer one time and i'm like i don't really want to watch this again because yeah. I really loved Fallen Order 1 and going into it, like, having seen no gameplay of it when mm -hmm. it released. Yeah. And I kind of intend to be, outside of, like, what they showed me at Celebration that year, I had seen almost nothing before launch. Yeah. And I kind of intend to go into this one the same way as much as possible, but first half of 2023 is going to murder my wallet, man. Oh, yeah. Breath of the Wild, probably God of War, Starfield, Avowed... Now we've got Fallen Order. We got uh, Jedi Survivor. I can't call it Fallen Order Two anymore. Jedi Survivor is coming out. Yeah. Uh, after the state of play today, it looks like Final Fantasy Sixteen is coming out. Uh, towards the end of that window. Yeah. Resident Evil Four remake, Dead Space remake, Callisto Protocol. Well, that's the end of this year, I guess. I, bro, I don't have the money, let alone the time to play all of this. <laughs> It's a gr it's a great it's a great time to not be an asshole in gaming. It's just it's great. Right. It's great. Yeah. Very excited. I'm very ex I'm very into Star Wars right now. I was looking. Yep. I, I watch videos yep. on the uh, make your own lightsaber at Disney. It's still one of the best things I've ever done. They're about to update all the builds too. Yeah. Which I told Chelsea that, and I was like. I might have to build another lightsaber. And she just, like, I think audibly groaned. At some point, she's just going to, like, take the lightsabers you own and just pull a Dooku on you. <laughs> Your head's just going to I mean, so right now I'm, I'm, like, still okay because I built one and she bought one. Yeah. We were good there. Then I bought a birthday present for myself, which I finally get to have on Saturday, which is the Cal Kestis Saber. And that was solely because we happened to actually be at the park the day it came out. Yeah. We were on vacation. And literally, I swear to God, pure happenstance, I did not know it was coming out until the morning we were headed to the park. I get, I get, I wake up to a flurry of text messages getting off my cruise that, hey, the Saber is available. Are you going to try and buy it today? I am constantly reminded that I waited three hours to buy a lightsaber. Hmm. Um, it's better than seven hours for a figment popcorn bucket. Better than seven hours for a figment popcorn bucket. You're after, see, Corey, you, you know what's going on. And I am um, a huge figment fan, and I wouldn't have even done that. You are, in fact, a huge figment fan. I uh, So I, I didn't have a whole lot of remorse there. And I was like, you know what? We got we got through Celebration without me seeing a hilt I had to have. I'm saying no to Darth Sidious. I'm saying no to Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm proud of myself. I'm very proud of myself right now. So, but uh, me me mentioning that there's new builds coming may be what tips it over the edge. Hmm. I don't think I'll be allowed to do it this time. But that's okay. I really, I'm waiting until they have the one with, like, the actual extendable blade that comes out. I'll pay, like, 500 bucks. I don't care. You mean, like, the, the quote-unquote real one? The yes. The one they use at the Star Cruiser? I will absolutely buy one of those. I would I would pay an obscene amount of money for that. Yeah. I kind of... And I have zero shame. I so I watched. I know we we should probably start talking about Destiny before we. Get we probably started. should, but guys, we're talking about buildable lightsabers and blowing all our money at Galaxy's Edge. It's true, it is true. I also watched some of the Star Cruiser videos, and I'm yeah. kind of into it. 
Not that I have five thousand dollars to spend. I but... yeah, I have a limit to what my fandom will allow me to do, and uh, me paying five thousand dollars for a two night stay at a hotel is not in the cards. But the the thing um, is, it's, I don't. The thing is, is it's like you're part of the stage play that they're putting on there. <sighs> It's not like I a get hotel it. And th- I think that's also what bothers me a little bit is like I don't want to like I don't want to like do dress up and like have to play along for two days either. Just you don't like, want to commit. Give me, a, give me a Han Solo blaster. Give me his vest and let me go just ape shit with it. I don't know. If there's not a shooting range, if I can't be friends with Chewbacca for two days, then what's this all been about? <laughs> you do get free lightning lane to uh, Hollywood Studios though. All I want to know is would I get to get would I get a guaranteed slot to ride Smuggler's Run and get to be the pilot? Because I've ridden that ride like four times and I've never once been the fucking pilot. I'm always the engineer. Dude, engineer's the absolute worst. Gunner, you're at least pressing a button. Right. But, but I want to be, be the, the pilot, pilot purely so I can send us the light speed. That's the only reason <clears throat> I want to be the pilot. Yep. Also because I'll probably cry real tears if I sit in Han Solo's seat. Right. I just I just <laughs> so, want to be the pilot. That's all. Now that we've gotten through Josh's therapy hour of why he hasn't been allowed to fly the Millennium Falcon at Hollywood Studios, <laughs> let's talk some Destiny. Let's do it. Let's let's talk some let's, Destiny. Let's do it. We're going to fly through the TWAB real fast. There's not a whole lot here to talk about, um, but this is where we're going to have our Iron Banner discussion. Uh, controversial topic this week, but I want to get through Iron Banner, the good, the bad, the ugly, so that we can get no to new the armor. Topic, just the dungeon. Yeah, oh, we're going to talk about that rewards track. I'm more mad about the rewards track than I am anything else right now. Um, so we're not we're not going to break down what they've already shared. You guys already know. It's Iron Banner Rift. If you need an explanation of what Rift is, if you haven't been able to play, you can read this. I would almost suggest just going and playing it, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, is, this sounds a lot more boring on paper. I'll be completely honest. Um, and then... Uh, the reputation changes. That that's one of the big ones right now, right? Make sure you're wearing your five pieces of armor or your four pieces of armor, or armor ornaments from Iron Banner. You've got an Iron Banner emblem on, and then you're doing your dailies. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a bug with the daily rep, though. If you do more than four of those, which you have to do more than four of those to get the triumph, you will not get your reputation gains anymore, and you will be down to earning sixty-five rep per match instead of three fifty plus. Mm-hmm. And that is horrible when this seal requires you to get two Iron Banner resets. Did they? Um, I think the people who were planning to do this week one were always like kind of nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's still that's pretty inexcusable uh, for a bug, in my opinion. Did they fix uh, the ornament you're... bug? Did you see that? Uh, yeah, I, I did see that. Unfortunately, um, I think I'm actually partially afflicted by that bug because I have a piece of Iron Banner armor that I wear all the time that I forgot about. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't stack ornaments on top of Iron Banner armor because it will not count your full progress. Um, that's, I mean, that's obviously frustrating. I don't really, there's really no other way to describe it. It's just, it's frustrating all around right now. Um, And as reputation gains, that kind of plays into the rewards track, right? So let's talk Saladin's rewards before we get into the actual Rift mode. Yeah. Um, When you go Saladin, I mean, one of the things I think everybody universally has has liked is how the tower is decorated for Iron Banner. Okay, yeah. it's like you're coming to a Christmas grandma event. The Rise of Iron theme is playing in the tower right now, which is one of the most hype pieces of music in Destiny history. Mm-hmm. One of my absolute favorite themes ever uh, is that campaign theme. And, uh, you know, it's great to hear that back. You used to get it whenever you wielded the axes in the campaign. Loved, yeah. Love seeing that, love hearing that back. Um, you go to Saladin's Rewards and you see you have... A couple of weapons we've had before. You you have, you have Peace Bond. You have the Sword. Uh, I forget what the next one is. But then the last two are Hero's Burden and... Um... Oh my god, it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't. Wizened Rebuke, uh, the Arc Fusion, are the last two rewards. And those are those are the reprised, reprised weapons for this season. It should be noted that they look different than the last time we saw them. Um, I actually really like the updated look. And at first glance, you're going, okay, this is actually really cool. I really appreciate that this is all weapons, as it should be. 
Saint-14 could learn a thing or two from how Saladin is bringing his rewards in. There's no bullshit bounties to pick up. It's a daily challenge that's just baked into the mode. Play three matches as a certain subclass. Cool. I love it. I love the reputation gain system. It's cool. You can max out at like 13.8 times, I think, mm -hmm. is what you can ultimately cap out at if you do everything. Um, you get all four of your daily buffs plus the armor plus the emblem. Cool. Excellent. Outstanding. When you reset your crank for the first time, that's where I think I have a problem. The next track, you have two or three slots of upgrade modules, which I, I'll never say no to more upgrade modules. I'm always running low on those. Two Iron Ingrams, and then at level 16, there's the Iron Banner Shader. Hmm. That's where I start having a problem. I think that things like the Shader at the very least, should be earlier in a reset because if you're going to change the shader out every season, you're expecting people to go get double shaders. You're expect expecting people to do double resets every season on right. a two-week event. Yeah, that's that ridiculous. That is fucking wild. That's fucking wild. That's ridiculous. Double reset? Like, I'm not even asking... I'm not asking for the world here, and I know that it's just a shader at the end of the day that I'll probably never use, but... The completionist, completionist in me needs it, first off. Second off, Iron Banner's provided some pretty great shaders over the years. Third, why would you lock a cosmetic reward? Like, it's the same philosophy I have on these stupid weapon ornaments. Why on earth am I going to play that much Gambit? What? I have 13 weeks to play that much Gambit. <laughs> uh, if I don't do Gambit in that amount, I'm sure as fuck not going to do Iron Banner in this amount. Right. I will note that once you get that rep buff, it does go significantly quicker on leveling up. I will note it goes significantly faster. But man, uh, I played a lot on Tuesday. I played a little bit on Wednesday. Um, I don't understand why. So like, I'm not saying hand me out the shader at the beginning, but give me the two new weapons partway through the rewards track so they're in my Ingrams going forward. And also, you, you, he works like every other vendor, where when you click on your powerful reward from him for each major rank, you get a weapon. Why on earth is that not limited to Iron Banner weapons and gear? Why am I getting a grenade launcher from the world loot pool in there? Right. I'm leveling up in Iron Banner. I should be getting an Iron Banner piece of gear. Right. It's so stupid. This is not that hard to understand. I I just I mean I just feel like if you're playing the if you're playing the the uh if you're playing Iron Banner you should get Iron Banner gear. That's that's how I feel. Sorry. I also think like man, I appreciate that uh gear is supposedly easier than ever to get from Iron Banner, but I mean I wouldn't fucking know. Um you get a you get an Iron Ingram for every minor rank up, which is Great, fantastic. It costs a hundred legendary shards to focus one of those Ingrams. What? Yep. Now what? that may not be a huge deal. Like I, I have like thirty thousand legendary shards, so this isn't a huge deal to me because I'm only going to focus on the weapons that are brand new. But for most players, that's an absurd cost. That's yeah. a crazy cost for people who are constantly upgrading and infusing stuff. God forbid. God help us when there's a new set of armor that comes to Iron Banner, like. I don't know what you tell a new player. Like, sure, it may not be light level, but man, you got to reduce that cost to like 25 shards, maybe. Right. Maybe 25 shards. I mean, I would say 30 would maybe be the limit, but still, it's like, God. Like, uh, the way I'll put this is, the way I'll phrase this is, this is not fucking Trials. No. This is not in it. This is not a light level capped end game mode anymore. Right. They're making it, it is easier still than ever for people. There's plenty of that... pinnacles to be seen. There's a lot of pinnacle rewards being handed out in Iron Banner, and I love it. But you've got to make this more accessible uh, in terms of the cost, I think. Right. Um, and, I mean, I guess you could argue, well, you know, you're loving up Crucible at the same time, which is true. Um, it still, like, it still doesn't feel good, though. Yeah. It's, Nothing about feels it feels really... good. It feels really kind of janky, honestly. Uh, I, I, I hate it. I low-key hate it. I will probably get through one reset and maybe a little bit more um, this week. I don't know how much I'll play this weekend, though, with first off with the reputation bug. And second off, I mean, it, you know, it's birthday week. 
Um, I'm being kind of strategic with how I play. I have two of the daily buffs now. I'll probably get my other two on Sunday and Monday, respectively, and just go balls to the wall Monday during the day. Just go absolutely crazy trying to play as much as I can Monday and Monday evening. So you're getting 350 repu- or th- about 300 reputation for just losing a match. Mm-hmm. Cool. I have no problem with... And I mean, I'll stay competitive because I'm trying to earn the title also. You only get points towards completing objectives for the title if you're the one picking up the spark, if you're the one dunking, or if you're shooting the runner on the other team. That's the only way you get points. Right. So, and it's beneficial to you to be the one dunking because you get five points instead of just one. You don't get any points when your team dunks, which I think is wild. Wow. I think you should at least get points when your team dunks. Right. At bare minimum bare minimum i'm not saying make this a handout title but when it's something that's not rift that title is going to be a handout and that's fine i do think there needs to be something that's not like a uh you know a competitive hardcore pursuit for a pvp title but my god right two raw 200 banner resets man i'm and i guess across multiple seasons it doesn't look as bad it just looks bad to all of us who are trying to do this in rift which i think kind of like brings me to the actual game mode yeah. As Rift is, I don't have a huge problem with it. I actually have really been enjoying Rift, and I think I'm like a one of a handful that is like, hey, I think the core of the mode is really good. I think it's really fun. But there are some serious changes that need to happen. The respawn timers are way too long. It's 12 seconds if somebody doesn't pick you up. 12 I seconds? I can't tell you the amount. 12 seconds. I thought it felt long when, when I played it, but I like I wasn't paying attention because I was playing... It's 12, oh my God. it's 12 seconds, and it gets worse when you respawn, you either respawn back at your base and have to book it all the way to the other side of the map, or you spawn way out in the boonies if they're in your base and you can't get there before they dunk it. Jeez. Um, so I and once one, it's it's the snowball effect. Once it starts, it just keeps going. Right. Um, I do appreciate that they can't sit there and spawn camp you anymore. Um, between rounds, like between dunks and stuff, um, everybody gets transmatted. Putting it to a black screen is really jarring, though, yeah. because I thought I got DC'd. I thought for sure I got DC'd in my first round. Yeah. And uh, John had to tell me, John's like, no, no, you didn't get DC'd. You're fine. You're you're fine. That's just what happens that, with the transmat. That seems like something yeah. they have they have to do to compensate for last gen. Um, probably for last gen, and I just, man, I don't know. It it really just took me out of the game, though. Yeah. Like every time it happens, it just takes me up because then, oh, let me sprint back to the middle, you know, and um, my, I, I guess my biggest issue with Iron Banner is this mode, I'm glad that it's here. I'm glad that it's different from D1. I In D1 Rift, kills also counted for points, and I'm really glad that doesn't count because, I mean, you'd have it done in like 10 matches otherwise. Yeah. You know? Um, I, I get why people are like, I want to, I want to see my KD. I want to see how many kills and assists I got. And I'm like, that's not the objective here, though. <laughs> the objective here is to play the fucking game. <laughs> it's to play the objective. Um, I think my biggest issue is this mode should have been put in the regular crucible rotation for a season first. Yeah. Maybe feature it heavily in the rotator mode. Like take, right. uh, not, I'm not saying like take clash out or something, but like take, uh, take team scorched out for the season or something. Right. And uh, put Rift in there and say, okay, we're making the announcement now, but after this season, we know we're going to use this as a chance to see what you guys like about Rift, what you don't like, and then we're going to make it the Iron Banner mode. Or, you know, hey, you have this thing called Crucible Labs. Right. Why don't you put this in Crucible Labs and let us try it? Because the only people who are going to ward in the, who are going to wait in the Crucible Labs are people who actually want to play the objective. Right. Right. <laughs> That's... So I think that's ultimately my biggest issue. Yeah. Um, I do like that it's not light level enabled, but man, I, I think it, I I saw so much hyperbole this week though that I was like, okay, I'm done. Like some notable PvP players, not even two hours in, were like, I'm done. Like this is dumb. I'm calling on Bungie to immediately. I kid you not. I'm calling on Bungie to immediately revert Iron Banner to control for this week for the rest of this week at bare minimum. And I'm like. Who the fuck do you think you are? You don't even play the objective in there either. I've watched your stream. <laughs> like, you're complaining about nobody playing the objective. You don't play it in control. <laughs> you go in there with a six stack and you just run around getting all the kills. Like, no, no. Like, 
<laughs> okay, you're upset because you actually have to play it. And like, I, I'm not going to name names here, uh, who he was replying to, but Ascendant Nomad had a great response to one of these guys. He just goes, he's like my brother in Christ. It's been two hours. <laughs> Calm down. Like it, it is. It is one of those things, like, I think we've just gotten to a place of hyperbole so much, not just in Destiny, but, like, pop culture as a whole. Like, we look at something, and if it's not immediately what we built up in our mind, we just have the most, the response that's just filled with, like, the most vitriol that we can mm-hmm. think of. It's just, like, the default mode for us. I think, like, as a society, we're so fucking cynical yeah. that that carries over into something that's supposed to be fun. It's a game, like... Liana had to come out and be like, please stop sending us threats of physical harm. Right. To the community managers. She's like, I, I swear to God, like, we'll lock down our profiles. Like, we have them open to the public so we can chat with y'all and whatnot. But she's like, the um, the messages that we're getting over a game mode that we have no say in, by the way, is insane. And I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm, I'm done dealing with this. Like it, it's the, it's the like 0.01% of players that ruin it for everyone else. Right. Right. And that's, that's where we're at. That That's where we're at with this. Like, am I totally in love with the iron banner changes? Absolutely not. I think the scoring system sucks. I think the point system for the triumph sucks, you know, and I, I, I like iron banner, but the amount of posts I've seen going, you guys destroyed the only really like a pvp i always iron banner <laughs> iron banner's the thing i look forward to the most shut no shut up nobody looked forward to iron banner right. not a single person was looking forward to control after like five years of it right. you did not look forward you can play pasty ass control any day of the week right. it's literally the default in this game okay like you are not missing anything right. you can go play control anytime this is them attempting to give us an objective-based mode, but, like, based on how the reception has been to this, how I there are a lot of glitches with the mode. I haven't encountered any, but there are some where the spark doesn't spawn at all. Right. And you can't leave the match because then you get penalized by Bungie because it's considered competitive. Right. Uh, you, you have a finite amount of things you can do, or, like, oh, you don't respawn properly. You get caught in, like, a respawn glitch repeatedly. Uh, teams can get caught like that. Um this kind of snowball effect in a lot of ways. And again, I, I really think this should have gone through some, te- some public testing in either crucible labs or in um, the rotator playlist and then moved it over here. And I'd be shocked if next season, it wasn't something that's been extensively played by the community, like momentum control or mayhem. I think momentum is probably the most likely because it's capturing zones for God's sake. And I'll be honest, if it's Iron Banner Momentum Control, I'm going to play the most Iron Banner I've ever played in my entire life. I swear to God. Swear to God, I'll play the most Iron Banner that I've ever bannered. Right. The bananas will be raining. (laughs) Will you play Iron Banner with bananas? I will play Iron Banner while drinking a strawberry banana smoothie. I swear to God. Mm. Um... I, I just I don't know, Cor- Corey. What are you? What are your thoughts on, on Iron Banner? I really only got to play on Tuesday, yeah. but I played a lot on Tuesday, both by myself and with a team. I play. I mean, I played a little bit. Like I like Rift. I wish they would have let people play it first, like you said. I think. Yeah. I mean, I just don't. I get you get stuck in these matches where people don't play the objective, and then you're the only one playing the objective, but then the other team knows to kill the person with the rift and it's like well i can only do so much you know and and it's it's hard like i get that they want to change it up and i like that they want to change it up but the community doesn't want to play it the right way and it's just like come on just yeah um it's funny because like now they want now they just want control yeah now they just want control and that's one of the funniest, most wild things to me. I mean, I like control, but like, again, maybe switching it up, maybe Rift was the wrong mode to put here. You know, maybe something yeah. like, I don't know. The I I remember during Rise of Iron when they introduced supremacy. Uh, f- for those who don't know, as you, it's the one where you when you get a kill, you have to collect their shield or whatever that uh, enemy shield to get the point or whatever. I think maybe something like that would work better, or even that uh, the mode in Trials Labs where, like, oh, well, after this timer runs down, you have to go capture the zone 
if you don't kill yeah. all the enemies first. Like maybe something like that. Uh, uh, I will say that I really love the sudden death mechanic in here. Um, if you're tied, like for example, uh, two to two mm -hmm. or three to three, when the overall 10 minute timer runs down, mm -hmm. it goes into sudden death and it spawns three rifts. Ooh, that is just fucking wild. To I didn't watch. get there. And I actually really enjoyed watching that. Uh, our buddy Johnny, uh, had one and he was, uh, he said he got beat. Somebody got to his rift just before he did before he got to the enemy one and so they dunked it just before he would have won it for the team mm -hmm. but he was like it didn't he's like it didn't bother me too much that we lost because it was so fun right and i think something that's like kind of i don't want that for like every round but like that i think that's an interesting spin you can put on the mode um I, i'm not sure I, I wanted to read some of the feedback that damage kind of collected in a thread um that people have had about iron banner uh matches feel long uh, but the stop-start nature f makes it feel lengthier, especially if you're waiting repeatedly for revives. Mm -hmm. Totally agree there. Uh, it plays a bit slower, and you have to be a lot more strategic and deliberate with your play. Yeah, absolutely. Five dunks to win can feel high when an opposing team gains a healthy advantage early in the match. And limiting it to only three maps is rough. Mm -hmm. That is rough. I'm already so sick of this new map. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was that great to begin with. I mean, I, like, I'm glad we I got a new map. It's but fine. Like... It was very clearly built with Rift in mind. Though. Oh, yeah. It was pretty much specifically built for that. I look forward to playing this on something like Control or uh, Control or especially Momentum Control. I think this map is going to be wild, learning yeah. all the nooks and crannies and the ins and outs. I dread when this is the Trials map. I will sit that weekend out. Um, huh. I think that... Bannerfall and hilariously Convergence actually play really good for this mode uh, because of the corridor-based nature of those maps. Mm -hmm. I think that actually makes it really fun. Um, well, let's see here. Um, an objectives-focused mode in Destiny has been fun to many players right off the bat. Yep. Uh, players would like to see a few more metrics to understand if they're doing well or contributing to the win. Totally agree, because there are people who will never touch the ball, but are so critical to a team's win in Rift, and yet they're never going to get points on the team, or it's going to show zeros across the board, they won't get any progress towards their triumphs, etc. Like, that's, I understand why that is really frustrating to see um, for, like, the top KD people. Um... Uh, matchmaking. Um, there's been some matchmaking issues with a lot of teams in freelance. Uh, the reputation bonus system is appreciated, but confusing to understand. Um, and I mean, this is obviously this is after 24 hours. This was from June 1st. This is June 2nd when we're recording. This is all like the gut reactions of the first day that you know we're kind of reading out here. Um, and you know they're tracking some of the issues. Um, I do think that the score probably needs to come down uh, from five to four. Um, just to help with those match length times. Mm -hmm. The respawn timers probably need to go from 12 seconds down to like eight or nine. Yeah. And I think the spawn's got to be a little more generous too. Yeah. Uh, I think they're uh, on like Bannerfall, it's okay if you spawn forever away because you can jump up into that top lane or dash into a room and still contribute. On Subjugation, it feels really, really bad though. Yeah. It feels really bad to spawn forever away. Um, and, I mean, a lot of the other complaints that we've already addressed, the black screen on teleport, cheaper focusing. Um, something else, and this is something Paul Tassi said in uh, Damages Replies, said that he would like to see um, year one ornaments come back, so season two and three ornaments, which I rock the season three set all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dark Souls-looking armor. Right. He's like, you know, I'd love to see that come back, and yeah. totally agree. I mean, I called for it for Trials a couple weeks ago. I want to see it come back for Iron Banner also, but not even just that. Like, give me give me back some of the older armors. Give me the stuff. Give me the armor from Forsaken back as ornaments. Right. Give me those shaders. Give me yeah. the give me the cosmetics. Let me earn all that stuff. G give me post-match rewards of, of things I haven't earned. Give me like a 5% chance for something. I almost 5%. feel like I almost feel like that armor, like once it's it, like especially for a mode like Iron Banner, should just be in the pool, <laughs> like every time it comes around, no matter what. You know? Yeah, I, I don't understand, especially when you don't have new armor, or even when you do have new armor. Cool, make all past sets ornaments then, or let me buy the ornaments 
when oh. Saladin comes around. I don't know. Like, let me focus my Ingrams into it. I've said I would do it for Saint. I would give up multiple Trials Ingrams to get the chess piece that I'm missing right. from year one Trials. Yeah. You know, um, I don't want to see the armor repurposed again and brought back again like it has been. Like, I, I'm tired of seeing some of this Iron Banner armor, but I do think there needs to be a way to earn past stuff. Okay, cool. What about rewarding players who played during that time? Shouldn't they have something exclusive? Yeah, you had four years to wear it. Okay? You've had four years to run around with it, and I haven't seen... I have never seen one of you wear the armor that I'm wearing right now. Okay? I guess because so few people were playing when that armor came out. Right. Like, I don't, everybody needs to have access to this stuff. There's no reason why we can't just have universal ornaments as rewards. Sparrows, ghosts, ships, shaders especially. There's no reason why this stuff cannot be in a rewards pool for everybody to earn. Right. There's no reason. Right. So, and that's you, it. I'm going to get, off my, want, I'm gonna get off my Iron Banner high horse here. I was just going to say... Do you have anything? I was just going to say, if you want... It, if you want to get a guaranteed set of the new armor or the current current armor that's out, like, do the... Do the uh, well, I guess there aren't bounties anymore, so. Yeah. But, you know what I mean. Like, just do the, the normal stuff, the, the stuff that's happening now, so. I don't know. I like the older armor sets. I think this set that's available now is, like, one of the worst sets they've ever put out. For Titans, I really hope least. we have a new set next season, because to not have a new set of armor for your Iron Banner relaunch yeah. is pretty rough, I think. That's Yeah, I was totally expecting. I was like, all right. Iron Banner's coming. They're going to show off the new armor. It's going to be cool. It's, it's, it's the underwater weird sea monster crap. I mean, I would take like an iron, I would take an or, like an ornament for some exotics for an exotic or something. Give me oh. an Iron Banner. Hell, give me an ornament for the uh, seasonal legendary that you chase at the vendors. Give me a give me an Iron Banner ornament for that and that second uh, level the of the resets if you really want to force me to do it. I uh -huh. would take an Iron Banner ornament for those. Right. Especially because we just figured out Pro Chip did not know this until I saw it on Twitter. You can go to the kiosk and you can buy the ornaments that you missed for Beloved, Salvager Salvo, uh Adored and uh I already said Adored. Adored Salvager Salvo, Supra, uh, Ascendancy and Null Composure. You can go buy the ornaments you missed for those. Hmm. out of the kiosk next to the vaults did not know that until it was pointed out to me the other day and i felt like a fool hmm. it's like iron banners had a pursuit weapon before yeah. one of the stag it was yeah. great it had an ornament why why can't we get i mean just add in something else for us to chase i i don't know how hard it is and i mean this is just me backseat developing i don't know how hard it is to develop a special skin i mean uh, we've had an Iron Banner emote before that was sold in the store. Give us something like that. Mm -hmm. You know? Give yeah. me a legendary emote of, uh, you know, drilling the axe into the ground or something. Uh, give me an exit. Give me an Iron Banner execution. Right. I yeah, don't know. Cool. Like, just, it, it goes back to what I've been saying about events, though. Give us unique things to earn. Yeah. And, like, something like that, make that, like, a pursuit that you have to chase. Like, yeah, you can really get it if you work really hard for this season. But it's going to be something you can work towards all year. We're going to do an Iron Banner refresh once a year. Right. You know, like the second season of the year, we're going to make that our Iron Banner re Or second or third season of the year, we're going to make that an Iron Banner rework. Uh, another one's going to be our Trials one. Like we're going to constantly have something that's being updated every single season in terms of rewards, ornaments, um, you know, cosmetics to earn, putting old stuff back out there into the pool. Like... You know, I think there mm -hmm. should be something that gets that update every single time. Right. And I don't think I'm too wild for suggesting that. I mean, I don't either. I don't think... So... I don't think that's... Bottom line, though. Rift good. Rift is Iron Banner mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, that's, like, the nicest way I can say it. Like, I think it's a good mode. It clearly needs some work, though. It was not ready for prime time. It got stage fright. Yeah, Rift got stage fright is just how I'm choosing to interpret the issues. Mm -hmm. I really think the plug should have been pulled on Rift before we got that schwab about it, and they should have just said, "Hey, surprise guys, we're gonna give you uh, we're gonna give you momentum control. We have to we have to hold Rift because in our testing there were some issues that were coming up. We're gonna introduce it as a Crucible Labs mode this season and hope to have it live for you guys 
with the re with uh with season three um of witch queen i don't think they would have ever heard the end of it though mm-hmm. so i think it was kind of like a do or die thing but it's giving the people in the in the pvp community who were already really upset as they should be for no new modes and no new maps for like two and a half years i think it was um this is giving them even more fuel for the fire though and it's just turned to outright like they've gone from being angry to just outright hateful now Mm -hmm. Uh, and to a degree i don't disagree but then some of those obviously that's where the threats against liana and damage were coming from and like if that's your solution is to get that upset over a video game just please disconnect and never play the game again please like you should you should not be playing you should be in therapy if that is if that is your solution, yeah. you know you cannot hide behind. We're giving feedback. Yeah, you're giving feedback by personally attacking these people and saying they're shills for doing their jobs. Like, right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, yeah. you would give your left testicle to go work for this company, okay? <laughs> you just would. Yeah. Like, just. Stop. I got some for okay, sale. Okay, they're not. The, the, Liana <laughs> is not personally going down into the Iron Banner team and going. Well, we got we we got a fuck uh, Hung Dong sixty nine on his uh, Iron Banner rep because he's being a real asshole out there. Nobody's doing that. Right. No one's doing that. Okay. Right. Like. <laughs> oh my gosh! Just God, I I can't. Corey, let's move on. Let's move on. Please. I, I'm upset now. I, no, we can't be upset, Josh. No. No more being Solar upset. Solar 3.0 notes. We got Solar 3.0 notes here. Shout out um, to A1 Johnny, by the way, for sending me a bunch of Titan builds to play around with. Shout out to A1 Johnny. I, John, if you're listening to this before I answer your messages, I'm so sorry. John messaged me no <laughs> less than like six times today. Very excited about certain uh, certain builds and about Iron Banner and stuff, and I just it has been such a busy day. I have not looked at my messages, yeah. And I just feel bad that they're all piling up in my inbox. Yeah, John, I promise I will reply to your messages as soon as we're done recording. I promise. He'll forget. Um, it's fine. Let I us know probably, if he forgets. I, <laughs> yeah, John, write in when I inevitably forget <laughs> because I just decided to go to bed afterwards. Um. Solar 3.0. Um, we're going to kind of hold off until next week, I think, to really talk about a lot of Solar 3.0, because literally, in the 15 minutes before we went live, the final four aspects unlocked at mm-hmm. iCora. Yeah. Um, so I want to have, like, a kind of, a, not a full weekend, but I want to have a couple days next week to experiment with those and builds. Yeah. Um, before fully talking about Solar 3.0 and, you know, impressions. I want to see if we can try and get a Warlock on here next week um, to talk... Um, solar from a warlock's perspective because a lot of the updates that they made today or that they are going to push on tuesday excuse me are going to directly impact warlocks and titans and titans needed a little bit of something something warlocks really needed stuff and it's this is what kevin yanes has said in the past we're keeping some stuff in our back pocket so if it launches underwhelming we'd rather launch underwhelming and then give you the extra oomph than launch totally and completely broken and one-sided because mm-hmm. that was kind of the uh, that was kind of the the gut reaction after the 48 hours last week when we talked about it was that hunters are awesome titans eh, okay and warlocks <clears throat> well now warlocks should be going to yeah so um i i want to before we get into what kevin says here i want to kind of note something he said on twitter because this is the one thing i managed to reply to john about today he, Kevin flat out told somebody who was asking him, like, just to, just hurry up and announce midair dodge for Titans again already. Just hurry up and announce Twilight Garrison is coming back. And he goes, yeah, that's never happening. He goes, you can put that dream to rest. It's never going to happen. Um, dodging in air is part of what we've chosen to make as the Warlock identity. Um, so I, I feel for my Titan friends. But at the same time, all right, you yeah, guys but there's can stop so many your better hopes exo- up. There's so many better Titan exotics at this point. Yeah. You really want to waste it on dodging in the air? You know, like, uh, I don't know. It, that's just my opinion. I have my own personal thoughts on it. Um, I never really understood the hype. And it's partially because I never played as a Titan in D1 with Twilight Garrison. Yeah. I don't understand the hype. Um, and I don't really play as a Warlock that dodges in the air either. Yeah. So... I get why high-end PvP players 
probably really, really wanted this back. Uh, Astacross in particular has been one of the ones that's been like just campaigning for it for years. I look forward to seeing his reaction video upon hearing this news. Hopefully he has one up this weekend so I can watch it and laugh. Um, but I want to, I want to read some of the changes that they're going to make. So, um, uh, first I want to read, uh, I want to share why Kevin thinks that solar kind of shipped underwhelming. And I'm putting that in air quotes because I don't think it was underwhelming across the board compared to compared to Void. I think Void really fills that space magic fantasy better than any other class, though. Just right off the bat. Because Warlocks are generating this giant orb. Titans are pulling a shield or a bubble out of nowhere. Hunters have this magical Hawkeye bow. Or they go invisible with two swords. Like, there's a lot of mysticism involved with Void, I think, just as, as an idea. Um, so they believe that it feels... Uh, this is uh, this is their re even they're saying initial reactions to solar have not met our new thing that melts your face off bar and we will that's due in part to a few things uh ember of benevolence shipped in an inconsistent state that left healers feeling un feeling underwhelmed with their kit when it didn't behave as expected warlocks who wanted to specialize in healing had limited ways to interface with that fantasy with two of their three aspects focusing on aerial mobility or scorching and losing the flexibility of choosing to use their grenade to heal allies or damage enemies Titans, while bombastic and potent, lacked ways to keep their engine running without needing to run, throwing hammer, or burning multiple cooldowns. Um, as we've said in the past, we'd much rather ship something a little too spicy than something bland that makes a bad first impression. I think with Solar 3.0, we landed somewhere in the middle, and the team very, feels very passionately this is the wrong place to be. To that end, the team has pulled some heroics and shifted resources to make buffs to Heat Rises, Icarus Dash, Celestial Fire, Burning Maul, Roaring Flames, and Consecration, as well as bug, fix, bug fixes for Ember of Benevolence and a few of our DOT Linger Grenades. These changes will go live next week with Hotfix 4.1.0.2. So for Warlocks, Heat Rises, added behavior. Consuming your grenade now also releases a burst of cure times two around you, healing you and your nearby allies. Consuming a healing grenade increases the strength of burst cure times three and consuming a touch of flame healing grenade provides restoration as an additional benefit. Icarus Dash. Added behavior. While airborne, rapidly defeating opponents with your tar super or any weapon cures you. Celestial Fire. Each projectile now applies ten scorched stacks. These increases to fifteen stacks with Ember of Ashes equipped. So, healing fantasy totally there for warlocks. Now I know Ner I know Ner Generalist was pretty upset about this when he and I were playing in the initial days of the release. I hope that this you know kind of reinforces at least when you're using solar for PVE activities as a warlock, you're typically unwell. I hope that this fits that healing fantasy because when he and I were talking, he was actually kind of pumped for that to play the healer role. Uh, it's a role that is not played in games too often. People really hate doing it. Things like Overwatch. So uh, I like that that fantasy can be there for people. Um, Solar Titan, Burning Maul, buffed damage in PvE by 25%. Burning Maul is big hammer, of course. Uh, I matched with a guy when I did my dungeon run last week, actually, who was running big hammer in the boss room, and it was awesome. He was just wiping all the ads out by himself. I shudder to think of what that man will do with 25% extra damage. Right. Uh, Roaring Flames, added behavior. While it is active, your uncharged melee attack now deals solar damage and applies 30 Scorch stacks to targets per hit. This is increased to 40 stacks when Ember of Ashes is equipped. And in Consecration, Fragment slots increased from 1 to 2. Raise the height of the secondary attack's ground weight by 25% to more easily catch players who jump too late. That's no small list of changes. The team takes feedback very seriously. We play the game ourselves, so when things don't land, we also feel that internally. To say it out loud, a hot fix of this magnitude comes at the cost of other changes. So to set expectations here, the team is unlikely to take another balance pass until much later in the season. It's important to our team that on top of doing amazing new things, we maintain a healthy work-life balance, and this patch necess necessitates some breathing room. Totally and completely agree here. You know, yep. fixing things in, in a live service game is a delicate balance, I think. And for so long, we got so used to giant patches shipping every few weeks. Right. That is not a sustainable schedule. Right. You know, look at Season of the Lost. We had a couple mini updates throughout, and then we had the big anniversary patch, right? Right. We all remember the giant patch notes we read. We had the giant Witch Queen patch. We had a big one to start this season. Like, 
I would honestly expect we'll probably get like a mini one, maybe around like week eight or so, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit more balancing, right. but I fully expect the next big patch to come with the launch of the next season. Right. Right. Uh, and that's not an unreasonable thing to expect. I, no. I think that's really when you're going to get it. And uh, Kevin kind of dives into it right here. What's what? next for abilities? Oh, go ahead, Corey. Uh, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say when you have a game this big, and you know, there's so many things to balance, and you know, tinker with this, tinker with that. Like, I think making sure it's all right before you push it out, <laughs> instead of having like, oh, well, we pushed this out. Oh, well, this broke something because we didn't take our time, right? We, it, it just, mm-hmm. it just makes sense to push it out with the next season or the next big expansion or whatever, you know. So. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and Kevin kind of addresses that here. Arc 3.0 is cooking up nicely. We'll have more to talk about there in a future update. But to reiterate points the team has made in the past about the next sub plus update. After Arc 3.0, you should expect the abilities team to go dark for a while. Since shipping stasis with Beyond Light, the team has made huge abilities changes season after season. Over the last year, we've been back-to-back shipping new as- aspects for stasis adding the variable ability cooldown system and creating all three subclass 3.0 experiences. It's been a bit busy. We hope the changes you've read today reinforce our commitment to being responsive to feedback and candid in our communication. That has been one of the absolute biggest critiques is I think Bungie's been a lot more open this year, but we haven't gotten some, uh, uh, sometimes it can kind of black. Why are you doing this? Why did you feel the need? And I think whenever they bring Kevin in, that's, okay, we need a major explanation. We're bringing in one of the senior guys to kind of explain the philosophy behind this. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's not taking a million and a half words to do it like some other people do. Right. So, uh, I I mean, hey, I'm here for it. I think all these changes sound really good to, uh, you know, Titans. Titans need a little extra oomph, and you got that. Warlocks are getting the big boost that they needed. Hopefully bringing them back on par, kind of where they were. Uh, while still being able to kind of seamlessly switch between like the PvE and PvP fantasy roles for a solar warlock. Right. Um, do you have any other thoughts on solar 3.0 as it exists here in this TWAB before we do like a really big breakdown next week? Nope. Of our real feelings on it. Nope. All right. Um, I mean, the rest of it, you got some new Prime Loot Gaming. It's a Polaris Lance bundle. Go Ooh. get that. Um, it's that not the excitement. ornament that I want. I. There's been one Polaris Lance ornament I've been chasing for like four years, and I have never wanted to actually spend silver to buy it. What is, what is and it? And I may have to cave and do it. It's the uh, the Icolos field tuning skin for it. Huh. Um, I really love that ornament. There is uh, a new Heroes Welcome video. You know, of course, this was something that got launched around the time of Witch Queen uh, featuring Amaze. Uh, if you've never seen Amaze's videos, you should go watch them. He freestyle raps while playing Destiny. Uh, and while absolutely crushing it, it's a very cool video they did. Um, <laughs> there is a lot here from uh, from player support. <laughs> a lot of known issues, and I don't actually know when they're going to get to some of these. Um, so, GG's, there's a whole list of issues. I'm sure that we've all uh, experienced some of these at some point. And of course, you know, you end with your uh, your movie and your art of the week. Uh, there is one final thing I want to highlight here uh, towards the bottom. Uh, we know that uh, St. Jude, so St. Jude uh, GCX Marathon is coming up. It actually kicks off, the streaming marathon kicks off uh, on June 3rd at 9 a.m. Pacific time, which if you're listening to this, it will probably be live by the time you're listening to this. Uh, and we'll cl- conclude June 10th at the same time. Um, there's some sweet prizes on the horizon for the event, including new emblems to show off the world. Um, I believe Bungie has a block during this like they usually do. Um, but I don't actually remember, to be completely honest. They usually have some stuff that they announce as incentives during it. That's when we got the Jotun toaster, for instance. Um, where they used it to show off, uh, concept art. We got the first shot of, uh, the hunter armor in witch queen from there last year so maybe we get something like that here question mark Mm -hmm. um and then uh, of course because it is june and it is pride month uh there is a new uh pride pin 2.0 with a uh very cool prismatic uh infinite prismatic emblem here 
Um, and the money that is raised from this, all profits are going to go to the It Gets Better project. Um, so that's cool. There is a uh, link here in the TWAB to explain, you know, what it's about, if you want to donate directly, et cetera, and you don't want to pay $10 for a pin and $10 to also ship said pin. Um, so yeah, guys, it's there. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, stuff, a lot of rewards you can earn this season. And, uh, when we get to the other big chunk that we want to talk to tonight. Yes. Let's, let's, let's get to the big chonky chonk. Big chonky chunks. So let's talk some dungeon. Yeah, dungeon. Let's talk some. Normally, we would talk about this at the top of the show, but I really wanted to address Iron Banner first. Yeah. Um. So the duality dungeon. Um. This I, gut. Re, I mean, gut, so gut reaction. You know, up front. Um. I did. I cleared it on day one. Uh. Got a few people through their boss encounters uh, who had gotten to the boss, and uh, you know, maybe you didn't have somebody or a full team to finish it. As well as when we found out you could farm the boss encounter. Yeah. You can farm the whole dungeon. That's just... <laughs> use it to my ears. And it does drop new stuff. It can drop new items. On my third run-through, I got um, the pulse rifle to drop from the boss. So... Um, I, initial thoughts. This is one of the coolest things that they've designed since Prophecy. I, I think Prophecy may still be the overall like better designed dungeon... But I love the encounter mechanic here of having to shoot the bell to teleport between the, quote, real world and, like, the nightmare. That's how it's kind of addressed. You So you start off in the tribute hall of the Leviathan, which I saw a lot of people. They're like, oh, my God, why can't we just get the tribute hall back? Like, it's right there. Like, oh, God, I'm never going to hear the end of this. I finally finally saw tribute hall comments die off after a couple of years and now they're back in full force hmm. um diving into Catalyst's mind is not what i thought this dungeon was going to be this is absolutely wild i really can't believe that we're just jumping into Catalyst's mind yeah um but as you're going through his mind is quote the real world you switch between his dream and his nightmare is ultimately what you're doing and you fight Several nightmares throughout. There's a couple I want to highlight from these encounters. So the first one is Galran, right? Um, you know, not going to spoil any mechanics or anything like that, but we're going to focus more like on the story and on the loot here. Galran, obviously we know why that's one of Kallus' nightmares. Okay, the the original wearer of the Crown of Sorrow, Sabathun tried to trick Kallus into putting it on. He shoved it on Galran's head instead, and, well, we had a whole raid to have to go kill Galran over it. Um, that dude's still running around shirtless and pantsless. It's, it's a little, it's a little provocative. Um, the second encounter, you fight three different nightmares and it happens so quickly, but I swear to God, one of the names is the name of the Cabal soldier that actually got taken over by Sabathun and helped destroy Tortoball. So... That's kind of a wild twist. And then when you get to the very end, you understand what Callus's ultimate nightmare is, and it's Keitel herself. Huh. You have to fight a nightmare of Empress Keitel. That's crazy. And this is one of the strangest boss fights I think I've done in a hot minute. Why is it because so strange? Because damaging like I, her. It's all I've heard about. People are like, oh, this boss fight is so crazy. So... When you go into the boss room, I, I want to paint a picture here. There's six columns. There's six or seven, uh, six to eight columns. And there's a gigantic version of the bell that you've been shooting for the mechanic to transport between the realms. It's there in the middle, and you got three mini bells. Well, those six pillars, those six or eight pillars, are your only cover in the entire event. Right. In the entire boss fight, those are your only instances of cover. There are no less... In, when you're in Callus' mind, so a.k.a. real world, mm -hmm. you are fighting no less than probably about 15 Scion snipers. Oh, great. All of which are capable of one-shooting you. Great. Um, There are six Cabal incendiary troops, which are your bell ringers that you have to kill in order to even activate the bells. Mm. And then, so once you do that, once you figure out what symbols you need and you go to the other realm like you have in every other activity, there are four snipers over there. There are a ton ton of dogs and i mean a ton of dogs and there are two colossuses over there also 
Great. Colossus is capable of slowing you down and then uh, inevitably one-shotting you. You can only kill the Scions that you need to kill. If you don't, then it takes your timer away, essentially, and you wipe. So you have to remember who you're going for, and there's nothing to indicate which ones they were. So you actually need to be standing on their platform and you teleport so you can just kill them right away. Wonderful. Once you've gotten all four of your symbols and you come back, you shoot the big bell. Okay, you shoot the locks on the big bell, you teleport back. You have to watch where Kaido runs if she goes left, right, or center. And you have to beat her to that bell. And she moves much quicker than you, by the way. You have to kill the bell ringers. And then before she stomps on the bell, you have to shoot the bell while you're standing in a circle to get this big damage buff to in order to do massive DPS to her. You only have 10 seconds to do DPS, and then she'll move to the next bell. Hmm. So on top of that, you have four Scion Snipers in there who are the only adds besides the incendiary troops that you fight. Who, again, capable of one-shotting you. Kaido can stomp you clean off the map. When we set step on us, this is not what any of us meant. <laughs> I want to be extremely clear about this. It's not what Zavala had in mind, guys. It's not what's... Uh, if that's what's happening to Zavala, I have very bad concerns about his back. Hmm. Uh, because I've been yeeted off that platform many a time. I have a um, lot of questions for Zavala at this point. I have an awful lot of questions about Zavala. He is... Zavala is... Uh, well, he's not the man in that relationship. I'll just say it that way. <laughs> Zavala's not in charge. Mm, nope. um, it's rough. It, it's, it is a rough encounter. I don't think the mechanics are that bad. I think it's just the limited time you have to stun her that's really the hardest part. Right. Um, once you've done it a time or two, you're like, oh, there's nothing to this. But that first time through, it's pretty rough. I mean, you have to have very high resilience in there. Right. Um, it's, it's definitely a challenge. I like it overall though. Like I think the loot makes it worth running repeatedly. Once I have really good rolls on the weapons, I don't know that I'll do it anymore. Like with every activity, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the way I can best describe the armor you get, cause this has been a point of contention is it's underwhelming. It's literally the hockey set from the old D2 concept art that we've seen. It's right. the exact hockey set from there. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, it's kind of basic. Um, it probably should have just... That probably should have just been like a world set added at some point. Right. Um, so I definitely agree. It feels like the Reaper set was probably meant to be here, and then they made it the armor ornaments instead. Right. Um, just so there was like no complaints. Yeah. Uh, it definitely feels like that probably should have been in here. Um, and I hope that Bungie has seen the complaints about it and kind of takes up the heart, because... We got three great sets of three or four great sets of armor this season, and then we got this compared to it. When you're stacking this up against the Reaper set or the Trial set, it's a heck. Even the Solar set from Eververse, this is pretty right. underwhelming. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can think is that maybe they intended for it to be similar to the Dido armor that they moved out of Eververse and into the Prophecy Dungeon a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, and it would be fine if there was another set in addition to this. I don't think any of us would have complained. Uh, but I think the, the levels that some people do into was absolutely absurd. The real star here are the weapons. Yeah. There is a, there's a pulse, there's an SMG, there is, uh, a breech loaded grenade launcher. Um, fuck, I'm forgetting what the, what the fourth unique weapon in the, uh, in the dungeon is. Um, completely forgetting now. And then you have two reprised menagerie weapons, the Epicurean fusion rifle and the, uh, fixed odds LMG. Um, I was fortunate enough to get really good rolls on both the Pulse, the SM, uh, well, on all three, on the Pulse, the SMG, and on the LMG. Um, the SMG has quickly become my favorite weapon of the season, though. Um, I think both that and the, that and the, uh, the Pulse rifle have just both been excellent for me. Uh, my Pulse rolled with the, uh, the new, tr obviously the new trait here. Mm -hmm. uh, bitter spite, which while using this while this weapon is equipped, taking damage accelerates the next reload. Taking more damage increases the effect. I got that with Vorpal, Feeding Frenzy, and Armor Piercing Rounds. Ooh. Uh, so I am really having fun with that. Uh, it's it's the same archetype 340 
as uh, as messenger, it feels like it fires just a little bit quicker, and that's probably because of the feeding frenzy that I have on it. Right. Uh, but it is a stasis pulse, so really enjoying that one. I would really like the. I don't know if it rolls with it, but I'd like to get it with headstone if it does. Um, and then unforgiven is the SMG. It's a void SMG. Um, and it rolled with Adrenaline Junkie, Steady Hands, and Ricochet Rounds. Mm -hmm. And this thing is, it's an absolute monster. It's a 750, so it fires the same as uh, Ikelos. Um, I have joked that, uh, was it Funnel Web needs to move over? This is the real new recluse for me. <laughs> um, I don't know that I've taken this off since getting it last Friday. I have used it in every single activity I can think of. It's all I'm running in Iron Banner right now are these two weapons. Uh, really, really, really enjoying myself right now with uh, with those two. And then fixed odds. Um, I managed to pull out Finder and Feeding Frenzy on it. Um, nice. So that's been pretty fun. 70 impact, 73 range, reload speed of 12. Hmm. Um <laughs> but that's what feeding frenzy is there for so uh that's been fun and with the two excess uh perk that's also been great you know that's the built-in perk on all the leviathan um weapons this season uh final blows to this weapon while your super is full grant a bonus to strength and discipline for a moderate duration um it's been fun i don't know if it's gonna be something i use all the time but it's definitely a fun solar heavy to run around with when I don't want to use Gallarhorn or I need to go do those pesky machine gun bounties. Right. Um, that combined with like Scorch and um, the uh, the explosions that you can trigger are a lot of fun. Uh, pairing that with uh, Drang has been fun on the Leviathan. Um, I finally got the Jotun Catalyst to drop. Nice. Been nice. great. Uh, look forward to finishing that up this week. Uh, getting some of those uh, incandescent explosions. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I think overall the dungeon is really good. Um, I think that our idea of what the loot pool should be is a little bit warped after prophecy um, because we had two sets of armor there, which I don't know if that should be the norm or not. I think that was an extraordinary circumstance, but. The armor you get should be a... I wouldn't even be opposed to a new armor set and a reprised armor, because we have to, that was where we got all the old Trials of the Nine weapons back. Right. Um, even if it did take a little bit of time for those to come into rotation, and really we started off getting the Ikelos weapons back first from there. Right. Um, those ended up still being some of the best in the game, though, that you can get in their classes, and I think they still are. Um, I look forward to seeing if I can expect a dungeon of the level of duality or prophecy every six months. We're in great hands. Mm -hmm. um, I liked grasp of avarice. I think that it's fun, but the loot felt really underwhelming after you got the thorn armor and after you got Gallarhorn. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, I mean, it was uh, fun, but it wasn't like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a big hand cannon guy though. So like for me, AS Luna was not a big deal. Yeah. Um, I didn't really care about AS Luna. Matador 64 did nothing for me. Hero of Ages did nothing for me. It was a cool sword, but it did nothing for me. Right. Um, so, I think at least here, the weapons are all, like, feasibly usable, though. God, it's really, it's really grinding my gears that I cannot remember what that the stupid final weapon is. it the sword? No, the sword is the exotic, and that thing is cool. The lore behind that is awesome. That's a Cabal sword that was once Keitel's. Yeah. Is it the, uh, let's see, Fusion? Uh, it is, um, I've got it pulled up here. It's Storm Chaser. Oh, my God, I can't believe I forgot this. The Linear Fusion Rifle kicks so much ass. It is, it's a new archetype for Linear Fusions. It fires in a burst, a three-round burst. This thing with firing line is now the best legendary DPS weapon in the game, uh, is my understanding. Nice. So I look forward to grinding out the boss. I, it drops from the second encounter and from the boss. I look forward to grinding those out in the hopes of getting one of those to drop. Um, I believe uh, Nerd got one on our first run through. He got that. I got the SMG. And then we both got nothing but armor from everything else. Um, like I said, it took me three or four runs to get the uh, the pulse to drop for me. Um, 
what was uh new purpose new versus the pulse i really want to get this breech loaded grenade launcher though because it's it is a stasis breech loader and it can roll with chill clip hmm. uh so very excited to see how that goes i don't think we've had a stasis breech loader yet so again give me give me all give me all the stasis weapons give me all of them give me a stasis glaive i'm ready for it right um, yeah stasis glaive but oh just my like, gosh <laughs> Uh, ne- next week, I kind of want to talk about. I want to talk about Solar 3.0, um, but I want to dive into like weapons and loot a bit more. Uh, maybe yeah. get back to the story content of the season. Just there's so much to talk about. I I don't know. People are saying that there's not enough to do this season, and I'm like, man, I'm feeling the opposite. I'm two weeks. I'm not even two weeks in. I'm ten days in, and I'm having a blast. Yeah. Um, if I'm done with this season by like late June, great. I got two months to play other things. I may finally pick up Horizon or Elden Ring this summer. Yeah. Um, I don't think every season needs to be super overloaded, like season of um, the chosen or season of the splicer were. Like, it's fine if we get to a point where, like, and hell, if the story is almost wrapped up by the beginning of July, great. I'm gonna enjoy the solstice rework. I'm gonna see how that goes with the event card, and I'm gonna take a break for a few weeks until the next season launches and King's Fall comes back. Like, there, there's nothing wrong with taking a break from an ongoing game. We say this all the time. Um, and I think duality is a great example of that. Like I haven't been somebody who wants to farm dungeons before I was extraordinarily lucky, extraordinarily lucky on my drops in prophecy to get all the armor as quickly as I did and to get the weapons in the time frame that I did, like get good rolls on those weapons on top of that. Like, great. I farmed, um, the boss in grasp of avarice to get the artifice armor but I don't really feel a need to do that here because that armor rolled really, really good for me. Um, like I'll be farming for weapons. And once I get the weapons I want and I get my sword eventually that that's the kicker here. There's an exotic sword tied to it. That's a random drop. I will be grinding out for the sword. I will do the things I need to do to the best of my ability to get increased drop chances. But this is something I think that the, the raids and dungeons going forward need to replicate is as you do certain triumphs, you get an increased chance for the exotic to drop. Now, some of these are like, oh, complete this, complete this, in, complete all encounters solo. Complete all encounters solo without dying. Um, collect all of uh, Callus's memories, you know, collect, uh, get all 12 collectibles in here or something. Like, I think those are all cool. I think filling out the loot pool should be another one. But, like, even if that just gives me, like, a 10% additional chance for doing, like, 5% for each of these, great. Then I've got my 10% plus, like, the 5 for five or 6% I normally get. I've got a 16% chance now of that thing dropping. Cool. I'll take it. And then there's additional mechanics to go back and do once you have the sword to right. get the catalyst for. Um, I think that's the way that you should do some of these exotics in the future. Not all of them, uh, but some of them. I like also when they're tied to quests like divinity um but i think that's what it should be if you insist on them being rng drops you need to have ways for people to get them a little bit easier so we don't have another situation like with vex or anarchy where people were doing like 70 80 runs before getting it that's absurd there should always be a time there should always be a little ticker that goes up like i don't know one percent for each time that you fully run the raid your first time of the week. So if you're doing it on three characters, boom, you're getting 3% each week. Plus you're getting the increment of what you get from these triumphs. Right. Max me, max me out at like a 35% chance of getting it or something. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, yeah. That like by, yeah. by run, by like run 20, I should be guaranteed this exotic. Right. Yeah. This, um, this whole, <laughs> this whole, like, 50 runs for Vex or, you know, 30 runs for, eyes tomorrow or you know what i mean like the, this it's just ridiculous i'm tired of hearing about it fix it like it can't be like again we're not game developers but it can't be that difficult to adjust a percentage drop it's not i think it's more about keeping people engaged and playing the activity i i get it but you it, don't think 50 it runs your, it gets your stats <laughs> up for uh for dungeon clears and it's like i think with the dungeon rotator you're gonna see that already like maybe increase the drop chance for eyes of tomorrow like by 15 10 15 percent every time that last wish is up yeah or something i don't know yeah i'm just again we're we're spitballing here but come on spitballing spitballing can we reflect on mm. how funny it is that you can craft epicurean and fixed odds but you cannot craft the four unique dungeon weapons 
that are brand new. <laughs> but you can craft the menagerie ones, and uh, listen, I will not be playing enough duality to eventually craft those. Fuck that. I will not be relying on RNG to do those. <laughs> I have no desire to do that. Like, you can't focus your Ingrams in them. I thought you were going to be able to, because, oh, there's two more slots there. Nope. Nope. So uh, I shan't be participating in that. Uh, thank God they're not weapons I care about. I dread the day that they have something I care about that's like that. Um, Corey, any any like dungeon? I don't really have a whole lot to share on duality. Like I think everybody in the community's kind of beating it dry at this point. I don't have. Oh, I, I kind of want to leave some of the lore for. Oh, if you didn't get in in the first week, cool. I know I spoiled like all three bosses here. But uh, I kind of want to save some of the dialogue that Eris talks about for a little bit later in the season for Lore Corners. Um, and get a couple more rolls on these guns. Like, I really want to get one on the on the linear and on the grenade launcher to talk about when we inevitably talk weapons. I just, I can't see all four of these weapons not finishing in, like, my top five of the season right now. Yeah. No, they all sound pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited to play it this weekend. I just... Uh... Yeah, I was planning on playing it last weekend, but like I said earlier, our third kind of didn't show up, so we just didn't get to do it. But yeah, it's cool though. I like the aesthetic. I like the. I, I think the weapons look cool. I, you know, so. that's all I got though. Um. I was gonna say something else, and I don't. I don't remember what I was going to say, what I was going to move to next. I actually remember. Oh, I, I remember now. Um, it was a little nugget that got really buried yesterday. Um, it got officially announced on Wednesday, and I saw it fly really under the radar because Bungie themselves didn't make an announcement about it. Somebody actually posted it in Paul Tassie's replies, which was pretty funny to me. But it is that Bungie and uh, Abrams Books have entered into a multi-year agreement to publish books in the Destiny universe. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that just now, actually. Somebody uh, put it on Twitter today. Yeah, I'm uh, so I'm curious to see what that takes. If it's going to be a full on prose novel, which, God, I have my fingers crossed that it is. Um, If it can be if these can be anything close to what the Halo novels have been, then we're in for a real treat, I think. Mm hmm. Um, even the Gears of War novels were pretty good there. Yeah. Um, I mean, there, there's a lot that can be said about a universe with such rich sci-fi potential, like Halo or Destiny, things that can span the whole galaxy. I just, I guess I'm a little cautious, and I almost want it to be mainly dealing with, dealing with brand new characters that we don't know, because if it's things regarding characters that we know, I'd rather see those come to life in, like, an animated series or in-game. Right. Um, like I've talked about how, oh, I would love to hear about Drifter's Travels, but I want to see that. I want to yeah. see those monolith creatures. Yeah. You know, I, I want to see things along those lines. Like, I would love to see a season of, like, a Destiny anime that is just the Rise of Rulk adapted into, like, four episodes or something. Yeah. I'd love to see that. I want to see something cool like the, uh, Battle of the Six Fronts or something, too. Yeah, I mean, Six Fronts, Twilight Gap. Um, I, I'd love to see those. I, yeah. you know, original. I like the Iron Lord battle against Siva. Like that would be cool. I've uh, I've said multiple times that I'm a pretty firm believer that the Man with the Golden Gun has to be something that plays out on the screen. Yeah. Um, if not, the very first thing that they do. Yeah. You know, uh, something that I think would work really great. I think a series would be fun about this, but I think it would ultimately work really good as a book, also would be um, discussing the great Ahamkara hunt. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's just so many things you could do here for a book, and it's like, well, okay, are they... And it could be something as, it could be something as big as that or something as small as, well, they're going to publish some more art books for us. Uh, we're going to go with them to publish our grimoire anthologies and lore books and things like that. Um, God, I'm so sorry. My eyes are so itchy right now. No, I, it's my, my right eye is like, I have like a slight cut right in the corner by my nose. Oh my God. And then like, I keep rubbing it cause it itches and now my eye is kind of puffy. Yeah. My, Just... my eyes are definitely puffy right now. They're, they're acting up big time. Um, it's been raining here the last few days. So me and the cat have been locked inside together. Um, 
I, I I don't I don't really know what else there is to say. Like just <clears throat> cool. There's more books coming. I want to see what form those take. You know, when they first announced it, hey, we're looking at doing things. My my things I was most excited about were in order an anime, some books, and an audio drama. Like I'm here for all of that. I think there's so many cool things you could do. Like you could do a hunt the truth thing, but from the perspective of like Warlock Anor investigating right. the drifter or investigating things on behalf of Ikora and the hidden. Mm -hmm. There's so many possibilities you can do here for storytelling in this universe. And I'm glad that finally, after eight years, we're finally maybe approaching a book coming probably in like the next 18 months, we'll have an actual novel in our hands. Most likely there's a lot of, I, I don't think you go make an agreement like this. If you don't have an author in mind already, mm -hmm. we're working on it. Um, it feels like, the lead up to the final shape is probably going to bring a lot of these things. Uh, I don't think you'll have anything before Lightfall, but I think definitely maybe you have like an excerpt from the book or like a, a prologue or something like that um, included with your collector's edition for Lightfall or for Final Shape. But I think once Final Shape is out, that's when you can kind of like just go balls to the wall. Like, okay, the games are going to continue the story as they exist now, but past events, we're telling in anime. So we're going to tell in audio dramas. We're going to hell tie the audio dramas into the games. Just be like, books and books and shows are going to cover the legendary things you've always heard about but never actually seen play out. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. awesome. Cool. Give Ready it to me. Ready for that. Ready for that. There's nothing that says you can't introduce a new... I mean, Halo's done it so many times. Introduce a new character in the books and they become really important in the games. Yeah. That's how the Banished were... Some of the Banished were introduced. Yeah. You know, not all of them, but several of them got introduced in books between uh, Halo Wars 2 and Infinite coming out. That's right. Yeah. So... Do there's it. a give lot me there some new, give me some new characters in the books and then like <laughs> in lightfall make them part of the story that'd be cool or something you know i mean always plan for the future right bungie likes or, to plant seeds years ahead of time or if like the final shape is like the end of all these characters that we love like start introducing new characters for when the final shape is over yeah you yeah, know? like I, I want it to get to a point where we're going, I want these characters in the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That is the point I want to get to ultimately. Yeah. Um, but Corey, we're going we're gonna to take a trip somewhere that we had to kind of ignore last week. We're going to take a trip to the lore corner. Lore corner. Got two pieces here. Um, one is from the Chain of Command machine gun. That is the uh, the pinnacle you can earn from any of the vendors this season. Uh, so we're going to read this first. I don't think there's really a whole lot to dive into here, but it kind of helps set the background for where uh, our main characters of the season are right now. Zavala stared out the helm's viewport. The Leviathan loomed in the distance, a blight among the stars. The commander leaned on the war table as the blue light flickered from the hollow projector. Images of Keitel and Saladin appeared to commence their scheduled briefing. We continue to encounter heavy resistance, Zavala said without preamble. He could hear the fatigue in his voice. As we expected, Kaido grumbled. My father's soldiers will fight for him until their last breath. And when they fall, more will take their place, Saladin added. Zavala sighed and lifted his eyes to glare at the Leviathan. He commands them to die for nothing. How can he call himself a leader? The words caught in his throat and he choked them back down. Kaido and Saladin remained silent, their projected expressions inscrutable. Leadership is a burden, Kaido declared, to those who understand its true value. Indeed. It is, said Zavala. He turned to face the hollow projector and straightened his back. Vanguard operations will continue aboard the Leviathan. We'll keep you updated with our progress. Both Keitel and Saladin nodded as their hollow projections faded away. Alone on the bridge, Zavala shifted his gaze back to the viewport, acutely aware of the weight of his armor. I think it's just important for us to understand because Zavala is going to go through some things this season. Yeah. You know? There's already some dialogue in the public event uh, this week, if you go and do it, where he is he's haunted by the memory of his wife. Mm -hmm. It seems and it's something we've only had mentioned a couple of times. Yeah, in the lore, but they've kind of been building to this. You know, we had it in some of the weapon and the event lore last year, and Kaido basically tells him, uh, "I will fight like I will fight these demons with you." She basically tells the projection of of Zavala's wife, who's, you know, kind of harassing him, uh, to be gone. She she comes to defend him. Mm -hmm. She's defending him from this, and he is he's very clearly touched by it. 
And it's like, I know that we joke about, like, oh, Zavala and Keitel. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not even that it's just a joke. Like, even if there is nothing romantic that develops there, even though, you know, that's the fan, that's the fanship, it's... He is allowing himself to become close to somebody in a way that he hasn't since Cade died. All right. Zavala, we we focus how much on how much Ikora really took it, or how the Guardian took it. Zavala may not have been the closest with Cade in the games, but we see years later that that's still affecting him. He has not allowed himself to get close to anybody. Mm-hmm. Kaido is really the first time, like even Mithrax, he's very reserved. He, wow. He's very apart. He assigns Ikora and Saint to be the ones to talk to him. Yeah. I mean, remember in Forsaken when K dies, like Ikora like goes on this kind of kind of rage rant where she wants to take an army of guardians and go after the reef and K or in uh, uh Aldrin and all this and like Zaval's kind of standing in the corner listening to her and then he kinda of hesitates and he said, No, we are not an army. You know, yeah. we are we are guardians and we are keepers of the peace, not yeah. soldiers. Yeah. So, I mean, he's very stoic and hard to read sometimes, but that doesn't mean the stuff's not affecting him inside. And the fact that he is allowing Keitel to get close to him in a, you know, in that way is, is very important. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. I, 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 I really like where they're taking Zavala as a character, though, and I do think that we're kind of we're kind of setting up to possibly say goodbye to Zavala here pretty soon. Yeah, I'm um, starting. I don't to think feel it'll happen way. before the final shape. I think kill, and I mean, I still stand by this. I think killing off Lance Reddick is a problem unless it moves the story forward. But like, he's pretty much outright begged them, "Please don't kill me off." Like, I really love being a part of this universe. And it's very clear he bought into it much more than Gina Torres or Nathan Fillion did once they finally gave him the opening to do it. You know, he plays the game all the time. And I I think that may be part of what's keeping Zavala safe Mm -hmm. is that Lance is just so involved with the fans and with the community. It's Mm -hmm. been jarring for me going back. I've been rewatching The Wire lately uh, over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, that was Lance's breakout role. Right. Was as... uh, as uh, Lieutenant Daniels in The Wire, one of the principal characters. And just like, man, Lance knew exactly how he had to act when he came into Destiny because he had to deal with a bullshit subordinate in McNulty with The Wire, just like he does with Cade in Destiny. And like, this this is great. I love that he gets to do something that he really loves doing. And this is a role he's not doing because of the money. I mean, I'm sure that the nice... And the nice monthly income is probably great for him, but he's pretty much the only name really still attached to the game. Mm-hmm. But he's really, really liking being a part of it. He hasn't been recast, yeah. So he must be enjoying it. Yeah, I mean he's super committed. You know, I mean like we lost uh, Bill Nighy right and Gina Torres mm-hmm. and Nathan Fillion and. Uh, Lenny James might as well not be in the game. Right. So, I mean, there he's the last kind of major name attached to this. And it's, I, I like, yeah. like the thing that I think makes him different though, is like, he's super invested, not only in the character, but in the game, you know? And, and I think that kind of goes a long way as well. So, and when, they, when, when Zavala finally goes, it's going to be, big like it's gonna be it's gonna be heart-wrenching yeah like uh, Cade was a big deal because that was really aside from Eros that was the only character they'd really built up mm-hmm. I mean but he they really had to do he, something... he really was until like I mean he's the only character in Destiny 1 with any personality right and then you go into like I mean Taken King like the story kind of focused around him and and Eris and then Rise of Iron was like that stopgap and, but it focused on Saladin, which is like, okay. And I mean, that's... Vanilla D2 was very much the Cage show again. Yeah. He's, I mean, yeah, you go and get Saval off Titan, but you spend a lot of time on Nessus with Cade. Right. You know, Cade kind of is the one who formulates the plan. He's the one who's supposed to plant the bomb on Gaul's ship, and when he can't, he gives it to you. Yeah. So, I mean, he's... So, yeah, it, it's one of those things, like... He's really, like, doubled down, and I, I think it's just because they never gave him the opportunity in Destiny 1, but now 
I don't think there's any question that Lance Reddick is the most beloved figure yeah. in these games. Yeah. Like, yeah. Brendan O'Neill is making a really strong case as Crow right now, but yeah. Zavala finally getting his due after how many years? Yeah. Has been just so welcome to watch. He's really like him, him, and Lance and Brendan are really carrying these seasonal stories. And like, of course, you know, now we have, we have other, you know, we have other, we have other voice actors coming in. Um, I forget who it is who voices Keitel, but she does a lot with, she did a lot with Mass Effect, for yeah. example. She's a yeah. very prolific voice actress. You don't just cast her to be a character for a season or two. You're casting her to help carry this narrative. Mm-hmm. So if you want to tell me the seasonal narratives are going to focus around those three for the time being, awesome. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I am all here for it. Right. Uh, but go was, ahead. Go ahead. Um, hold on. I, I was going to ask something, but now I'm just I I lost it. So never mind. I lost it. It's lost to the ether. Well, mm-hmm. While we're talking about characters that we love, uh, we're going to shift into the first uh, piece of the seasonal lore from Voices of the Haunted. Uh, this is something that Eris and Crow uh, discuss. Uh, the it's called it's called it's from Voice of the Haunted number one temperament. Um, and, and as a hunter, this one kind of hits home for me. Um, <laughs> Crow drops a wet cantina. Eris mourns feet. Water. You made your return quickly. Eris crouches, hunched over bundled splits of pine arranged atop a thick log and resin rubbed moss. She strikes a well-worn flint with her knife, and the flame ignites. You're not hard to spot at night. Crow averts his gaze from Eris' sideways glare and looks up to the haunting glow of the dark shard of the Traveler. Shivers convulse down his vertebrae, and his eyes drop to the freshly popping wood. Eris breaks the silence. Why did you volunteer for the severance operation? Or most operations? To make a difference where others can't. Same as you. She shakes her head. No, Eris mumbles. Crow watches her deftly coax the fire, considering the answer he'd given. He looks up to the distant tree line and changes the subject. There are still a good number of hive here, but no nightmares, Eris remarks. Is that why you brought me here? This isn't the place I want to revisit. Crow steps back from the growing flames. When Eris doesn't respond, he asks his real question. Why did I fail? You didn't fail. Our strategy was flawed. Eris stands, stowing flint and blade, then steps in front of him to meet his gaze. We will attempt the severance again. Soon. Yeah. Crow applies in a chipped tone. Eris tilts her head and he can see the green orbs narrow beneath her blindfold. She points to the ragged mountainous shard twisting in twilight royal. Even that toxic piece, separate from the traveler's purity, can be wielded for good. Fire roars. He kneels to break her stare and warm his hands. I know what it can do. I used it. When the Red War left Guardians lightless, there were some who reclaimed their callings here. They reforged their bond to the Traveler through a scar, a lingering trauma, she continues. Eris sits beside Crow and drinks from her canteen. Crow braces for her to continue, but she does not. The bundling of burning kindling collapses into a heap of cinders, and flames split, spit between the gaps and ash drifts on heated air. I'll get more wood, Crow says, hastening to step out of the fire's glow. Crow, small fires like this kept me alive in the hellmouth. I did not have the luxury of more wood. Eris grips a piece of rusty rebar taken from the sludge and thrusts it into the sputtering fire. She stirs the cindering wood, opening new gaps and concentrating the larger pieces over a pile of glowing kindling. The flame surges and the heat intensifies. During these long nights, we must make use of what's available to us. She knows he understands her, but hasn't accepted the lesson. She hands him the bar, shows him how to maintain the fire's heat, how to find worth in remnants, how to rebuild from the ash. The pair converse as they take turns keeping the fire alive long into the night. The warmth soothes, their shoulders lighten, and Crow pulls back his hood. When the fire finally dies, Eris gestures to the embers. Now you can fetch some wood. Crow smiles and gets to his feet. Eris... Did you ever try to get your light back? The past is not for dwelling. Crow nods and sticks out his hand. She looks at it inquisitively. Come on. Eris stands next to Crow. He clasps, clasps, God, clasps her palm and ignites a golden gun between their hands. Solar flame dances across Eris's fingers. 
Crow guides her arm and lifts the gun to the sky. He inhales sharply and howls before cracking a shot through the clouds. You're up, Hunter. Eris depresses the trigger slowly, doubtful that it would fire. A second solar streak pierces the atmosphere. Crow laughs. They send round after round skyward, howling pent tension into the sky and into the night until finally even Eris finds herself smiling. <laughs> I think this is important for a lot of reasons. This season really seems to be we're dealing with trauma this season. You know, we, we discussed in the past how, you know, Destiny has dealt head on with racism, bigotry, xenophobia, uh, classism, elitism, um, bordering on uh, <clears throat> apartheid and things like that, like how we've dealt with all that. And now they're dealing with trauma head on. Like this season almost needs a trigger warning in a way, but reading a piece like of lore like this really brings it all home. It's important for us to remember Eris has not felt the light since her ghost was destroyed by Crota. Uh -huh. And this is the first time in probably like what, two, three hundred years that she has actually gotten to experience the light and for it to be Crow at the sight of Aldrin's greatest failing to be the one to give her back the light, even if just for an evening, is something so symbolic of this story. I, I said before the season was up that I felt that Eris' story was done. And I don't think I believe that anymore after yeah. the first couple of weeks of the season. Mm -hmm. Um there's a line of dialogue at the end of this this week's severance mission, and we're going to talk more about the severance missions next week. There's six of them total. We've done three. We've done two of them so far. We'll have done three by next week. Um, when you get back to the helm after doing the second mission, though, Crow is speaking to you, and he says he understands what the hunters went through and how they felt aimless without Cade, and maybe there's something he can do. He doesn't know if they'll listen to him because he's so new to this. But if he can help in any way, he wants to. And it's very clearly setting the tone for Crow to be the new Hunter Vanguard, which is a theory we've had since it was introduced, since he was introduced, that he would eventually well, be the Vanguard. Did you, I mean, did you see uh, the dialogue, the Crow, uh, Crow's dialogue for something recently uh, where he's talking about gathering the Hunters if they'll let him? Yeah, that's that's that, that's the dialogue I'm talking about. You okay. get it after um, the Severance okay. mission this week in the Helm. Okay. Yeah. Um, the dialogue may be slightly different for Hunters. Uh, they've been known to do that from time to time. Yeah, I wasn't um, sure if it was Based on class or, or uh, character. Yeah. Um, he, he discusses that, you know, how, you know, maybe he can organize the Hunters again and this and that. It's just, it was a really beautiful moment this week. When I saw that, I was smiling from ear to ear. And then, um, you know, reading this, reading those last couple paragraphs they're firing off the golden gun together is it's touching i mean it's touching in a way that some of the lore doesn't always come across it's like man this is this is a reminder of how special these stories can be mm -hmm. it doesn't always have to be universe implicate universal implications it can be just a really beautiful story between two very traumatized souls yeah do you see a do you do you see a future where Ikora and Zavala both die, and Crow becomes the va like the leader of the Vanguard at some point, or like um, Saladin and Crow? If anything, I could see Sal. If anything, not Saladin. If anything, I could see Crow becoming the new speaker. Uh, yeah, um, well, yeah, that's something we threw around a little bit last summer. Because we, I, I think that that's something that's really easy to forget is that. Crow is one of the very few guardians to ever hear and receive visions directly from the Traveler. And we know it was the Traveler and it was not Savathun doing those because mm -hmm. he was receiving those while he was working for Spider. Right. You know, leading us to Hawkmoon and to the, the Broken Shard and things like that. I forgot that I forgot that the speaker was even a thing at this point. Yeah. But I, I mean, I think that it's it's something, I mean, the speaker is brought back up in some of the lore this season, you know, like the speaker is gone and this and that, like I really think that's, if anything, that's kind of what they're setting up. Uh, and there's there's some lore with Mara and Petra that kind of deals with Crow also that we'll get to later in the season. But he is very clearly trying his hardest not to become what Uldren did. You know, you hear in the Severance missions the, the ghost of Uldren, you know, kind of passing him and this and that. And, you know, bless you. 
Um, like, well, you know, you broke down crying, blah, 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 blah. Well, not anymore, dude. Uh, like, he's better than you, and you kind of see the redeemed spirit of Uldren hanging out in the helm after you finish this week's mission. Um, and I, I'm curious to see what the redeemed spirits or whatever they are will end up being story-wise, like, in story significance here in about four weeks, I guess. Um, there's just, there's so much to take in, I think, right now with how they're approaching this and like, okay, if this is the end of Mopey Crow, thank God, because I don't know if I can their season of him moping around or, you know, fucking things up as a kindergarten. Like, man, come on, come on. By the end of year one, I was slaying Oryx. Let's go. Let's go, man. I went into the vault four weeks after this game launched. If I can do that, you can stop working for a crime lord and stop crying over your long lost sister and things like that. You're okay. He even questions, he's like, why on earth would I have ever done this for Mara? All she does is manipulate me. Like, yeah, your old self was too stupid to understand that, though. So Already there, there's, yeah, there, there, there's a lot here in this book in particular. I'm very ready uh, to see what other pages come out of it as we go on throughout the season. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for Lore Corner for this week. We do have a question. We do. We do have one question this week. We do. We have it from Andre. Um, I need to. I need to listen to it very quickly, though. That's fine. We got a question from Andre in a video. Yeah, I got. I got to listen to it again. I forgot to write it down. First off, apologies that I forgot to write down the question. Um, I listened to it half asleep the other day. Um. What is a seal that you would like to earn in game or one that you have already earned that is special to you? That's uh hmm. I guess, I guess I'll I guess I'll go first. Yeah, um, you should I go have an, first. I have an answer for both. Uh one I would love to earn is flawless. Um for trials. And there's actually not a whole lot preventing me from getting flawless. Um it's mainly getting people to the... It's getting uh, two people who have never been to the lighthouse to the lighthouse after going flawless and uh, going flawless on two more maps, I believe. I think those are the major things that are holding me back. Um, so I'd love to earn flawless one day just to say that I did it. Um, one that I have that is uh, special to me, though, um, I would say there's probably two of there. There's two of them. Um... One of them is the very first that I ever earned, which was the Wayfarer title um, way back in Forsaken. Uh, earning the Wayfarer title was, I guess, did I earn? Yeah, yeah, that's when I earned it. I earned it at the end of that year, um, right before Shadowkeep came out. Uh, I remember marathoning that summer to finish the stupid Braytech weapons up. Um, just absolutely killing myself to do that. It was cool because I was the only person in my group of friends who earned it uh, initially there. So I was like, oh, I have this awesome title. I have a title. This is so cool. Like, I have a title. I have the physical seal from it. This is so awesome. And uh, then, like, three other people told me, like, the next day that they had earned it, too. Um, I would say the other one would be Undying. It was when we first found out about seasonal titles. And I was like, oh, my God, I can earn something every season now. This gives me something to chase while I'm just casually playing with my friends. That was back when Master Nightfalls were really, really difficult because we didn't have all the fun artifact mods and champions were brand new and we didn't have Gallarhorn. We didn't have linear fusions that were good. I went into it was and it was fucking Scarlet Keep that we did it on like the last possible day you could get it done. It was the last thing we needed for the Undying title. John gets yeeted off at the end. Phil gets yeeted off at the end. We basically are all just shooting the boss as we're flying through the air. We're shooting Hashal and we get the clear, and we all rise up there on the platform. Uh, that was really memorable. To give you an idea of what loadout I was using, I think I was running uh, Recluse and uh, Edgewise in there. That's how long ago this was. <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, that one, there's a reason why that title does not come off on my character. Um, I've had it equipped pretty much permanently for uh, two and a half years now. Thanks. Corey, what's yours? Um, so, 
I mean, I think flawless is, I think flawless is like something that everybody would love to have. You know, I think yeah. that's like, that's uh, something that people flaunt when they get it, right? I mean, you just see, yes. I mean, they, they've got the whole Iron Banner get up on, they've got the flawless uh, uh, thing, the flawless uh, seal, they have like the, the, the emblem and the banner and all this other crap and uh you know just just once i want to be like yeah i can do that too you know i i can do that mm-hmm. uh the so this with this new iron banner there's an iron banner seal i think that would be really cool to have uh i feel like that's a little bit more achievable and a little bit more my speed in terms of what a what i have time for b what my skill level could achieve uh so that's i i would like to get that as well i'd also like one of these uh raid ones like the vault of glass or the yeah i would love to have fate breaker one day yeah so that'd be super cool as well yeah i'm uh I've I, i've joked that i would like uh disciple slayer <laughs> um but realistically i mean i know that's not gonna i'm never gonna get through that raid of flawless <laughs> so yeah. that's not gonna happen um i am four legendary wellspring runs away from earning gum shoe though Ooh. um which is the uh, witch queen seal i would really like to earn that this season just to uh just to say hey i finally did one of the expansion seals because it was uh significantly easier yeah than past ones yeah uh, but all things considered, like uh, I think that's gonna kind of be my goal this summer. I mean, that just requires me getting an LFG for four days in a row. Like I just need to actually sit down and do it instead of procrastinating on it, like I have for three months. You could have had it done by now, Josh. I could have had it done like the week after the raid, and I chose not to. Yeah. So I need to take my own advice and go get an LFG. Andre, thank you for your question. I did appreciate the video you sent us, though of uh you trying to ask your question in game while you were in the boss room and you got absolutely annihilated i appreciated that so much it's so funny it was really emoting good. in front of the boss yeah it was really good uh and the fatality sound effect really caught me off guard though <laughs> uh it caught me off guard the first time i listened to it and then i'm pretty sure if you see the video of this one like my eyes like popped out of my head when it happened because i was not expecting that in my ears yeah uh so <laughs> Thank you, as always, for your question. I appreciate it. I don't think we had any other ones. If we did, I'm genuinely sorry. Yeah, uh, we if, didn't have any other ones sent... this week. Okay, good. I, I um, didn't see them at least either. So I'm do I'm doing a final pass here. Um, I know we didn't get any on the, uh, to my knowledge, on the uh, the show's Twitter account. But uh, I'm checking my mentions to make sure I didn't have anything pop up uh, that's a whole lot of stuff about ryan fitzpatrick uh gray poupon ice cream yeah what's the deal with this gray poupon ice cream you, you tweeted dude i don't know but every day i see i i see something like that i'm like oh god has definitely forsaken us hmm. um because i mean gray poupon is like the rich white people mustard yeah so <laughs> uh oh i i did want to read this out uh john's thoughts on uh season of uh the uh season of the haunted so far incandescent goes burr sunspots go burr rift dunks go burr daddy callus returning makes me go burr uh john i don't think you can call him daddy anymore after uh some of the horrible things that we found out that he's done like murdering uh Keitel's dog yeah because she loved the dog more than him um that that, that checks out <laughs> Uh, I did have something. Uh, it's just just a quick comment because I may, I was talking about Rift earlier this week uh, on socials. Uh, Rushjet TV says uh, it's been a good season. Bugs aside, I've been having a blast with the change of pace. New weapons are rad as hell, both in design and performance. Could not possibly agree more. I really really like the trace rifle. Uh, I'm definitely digging the glaive and the scout. I mean, God, if I had not gotten that pulse, the scout would never have come off. I don't think so. Really enjoying all those. Uh, enjoying them more than last season's weapons, by and large. Uh, last season had two weapons I really just took and ran away with. 
um, and a couple out of the raid as well. I'm kind of feeling the same here. I got two dungeon weapons. I got two um, regular weapons that I'm really digging. I was never biggest into the menagerie weapons, so Ostringer, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I like it for a hand cannon. I'm still not a hand cannon guy. Drang is probably my favorite out of the opulence right now. Mm-hmm. Um but I do, I do think that's it. Uh, John, John also gave me uh, something else to say about Rift. Uh, love, love, love having something to do in Crucible that isn't just uh, get kills. Makes sense to do it for two weeks only for the feedback and adjustments and what have you. Looking forward to this being in rotation moving forward. Totally agree. Um, and uh, I think that I think that does it. I don't think I have anything else yeah. uh, for us. I don't. I don't think there were any. Uh, we didn't really put out a call for questions this year. Uh, this year. <laughs> this week. Uh, it has. Man, it's been a busy I, yeah, week. I'm, yeah, it's been a busy week. I am, I am ready to take a nap. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to go to bed. A nap. I'm skipping I'm ready. dinner. I'm going straight to bed after this. <laughs> Look, it's it's Thursday as the time of this recording. I'm ready to sleep until Sunday. <laughs> Let's be honest. I agree. I I am ready to uh, to sit back, hang out with some friends this weekend, uh, Top Gun it up. Ooh, top Gun. It's gonna be a good weekend. Top Gun. Corey. Do what you do best. Roll us on out of here. Yeah, let's get out of here. I want to thank everybody for listening to this episode of Tower Casuals. Uh, remember, if you listen on iTunes or Spotify, please leave us a nice review or rating. It really helps us out. Uh, I appreciate all the new Guardians listening every week. It really uh, makes us smile. Makes us jolly, as they say. Uh, remember, you can follow us on social media at Tower Casuals. You can email the show, towercasuals at gmail.com. Josh, as always, thank you for your time this evening. Where can we find you? Twitter, at Josh for Finn, two ends. Caution, there may be an abundance of Fortnite clips. Ooh, Moon Knight. Ray and I have been playing an awful lot of Fortnite. I may or may not be diverting birthday celebrations on my actual birthday for like 30 minutes to go do the Fortnite season ending event, which is only available at 3 p.m. Central on Saturday <laughs> afternoon for a half an hour. Oh, that's funny. I may or may not have told uh, Chelsea that I have to do that, and uh, she's kind of stared at me. So I could feel her eyes roll from here. Uh... <laughs> You can find me at I am Corey HD on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can find me doing all kinds of things on the internet. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. And until next time, we love you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.